Welcome everyone to another episode of Optimal Health for Busy Entrepreneurs. It is your host, Julian Hayes II, back at it again with another fascinating, interesting entrepreneur talking about a subject I love. And uh, I love the story as well. I'm here with Shanna Dickerson. She's the founder and chief experience officer of Blue Sky <laughs> Luxury Travels, and which is a luxury concierge service, a really cool business that I was just stumbling on the internet, going down a rabbit hole. I seen, I think a post or something related to her and i read her business her story i was like wow this is cool so i got to reach out to her so without further ado i'm glad i caught her shanna how's it going it's good thank you for having me i appreciate it yes awesome to hear um you know let's talk about traveling how's that been right now very different very interesting um you know of course as a u.s citizen you can't go everywhere but you can go a lot of places um, so it's, you know, on the, on the plus side of what's going on, especially with us travel agents, uh, you know, there are a lot of destinations that are open and this is high season in the Caribbean. So most of the time us travel agents don't travel a whole ton during high season, just because there's not, you know, there's not available space. And if we wanted to go, we'd be paying full price and understandably so. Um, but now there is so much availability in a lot of places that us travel agents are like, heck yeah, you know, we'll go and experience places that are on our list that we need to get to. And not only that, we're experiencing them in the best weather. Um, which is awesome. Usually we're traveling when it's like a oh, hurricane season and, <laughs> and there were dying, tropical storms and hurricanes and all sorts of other things. So this is actually, that is a good plus side of things right now. So this is the, the traveling that I, I don't hear because I, a lot of times when we see travel agents and people in the traveling business, we just see pretty pictures, great weather. We don't see this other side. What do you mean? There's, there's downsides. There's, there's, Oh, <laughs> oh. You know, uh, the travel agents such as myself that are out living and breathing all of this, uh, traveling during all of this craziness, um, you know, what we're doing is we're figuring it out for our clients. So there's a lot of stuff you're reading online that isn't necessarily uh, what's right. Mm -hmm. So to go and experience it with these, um, you know, airports, airplanes, governments, you know, uh, governments and, you know, basically third world-esque type places. I mean, definitely learning a lot, getting a lot of tidbits to help clients to uh, do it the best way um, and and God forbid you do test positive and you have to go quarantine and and a uh, you know in the Caribbean somewhere you know we've, we've really got it figured out on how best to do it and then not only that maybe even save you some money um, so it's been it's been a huge learning experience yeah and so we're gonna pivot a little bit and backtrack before we go back to your business I was just curious on the travel end but um you're an athlete and so I always love to take some time to talk about ath athletics, especially sports I don't, I'm not familiar with, such as gymnastics. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was read reading on you a little bit, top level for 10 years. So yeah. how has that translated to business? How has that helped you in business? I think with the sports that I have done, so I started gymnastics when I was four years old and I got out of it about when I was about 15. So I trained six hours a day, five days a week. Um, I was recruited by Bella Caroli um, when I was like seven or eight. My parents were like, no, you're not going to do that. <laughs> and thankfully I didn't go because if you've watched anything with that, um, that doctor that they used, there was a lot of really terrible things that happened to these little girls. So Thankfully, I didn't fall in that category, but I was training at the level, you know, they were training me to, to go to the Olympics at such a young age. Um, and, you know, the coaches would tell me that I was such a great candidate for that because I had no fear. You know, I, they would be like, oh, try a double back flip. I'm seven years old on the floor. And I'd be like, okay, you know, I just was um, wanting to always, and I was pushing myself. My parents were not the type of parents that ever pushed me. It was just, um, I, I absolutely loved it and I was very good at it. So I became one of the uh, top gymnasts in the country, um, you know, competing at level 10. And, um, and I think that that sport, in addition to then I found tennis when I was seven years old and did both of those at the same time. And both of those are more individual type sports. And I think that they, as an athlete training at that level, it teaches you a really, especially with gymnastics, well, and with tennis, but perfection. And so I think if you can, you know, take a quality and say, you know, how is it useful between athletics and business, it just really teaches you to, you know, no fear. As an entrepreneur, you basically really need to have not a whole lot of fear. You're going to get knocked down a lot, get back up again. Um, there, there's a, you know, that's right there, a gymnastics thing. I can't tell you how many times I got knocked down and I got back up. So um, I think it taught me a lot of things, um, you know, athletics into being a business owner. 
Yeah, and I think of gymnastics. I also think of there's a lot of monotony, just just working on a deliberate move over and over and over yep. and over again. Be, be better, more perfect, more perfect. You know, if you don't point your toes in the specific right way at the right time, it's a, it's, you know, a fraction of a point deducted. And so, um, you know, you're always training and trying to just reach perfectionism. And, um, you know, on one hand, yes, that's, you know, not great. On the other hand, though, I think it's done a lot of really great things. My business is, um, it's very organized. It's very, we try to take extremely great care of our clients. Customer service is like huge in, in my business. And so I think it carried over in a lot of really great ways, actually. And so let's dive into your origin story a little more. And so um, how'd you get to where you are now? Were you always a lifelong entrepreneur or, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I read a little bit about it. So, but I, I'll, let's hear from you. Well, I don't know if lifelong entrepreneur, because honestly, when I was in high school, middle school, high school, even into college, I didn't know what that word was. I hadn't heard entrepreneur. I, I didn't, I didn't have a clue. It was just, you know, my parents and other, and, you know, my teachers and stuff going, okay, well, what do you want to do after college? And um, so I ended up going into the music business. I graduated from University of North Carolina at Wilmington. So I went to NC State for the first three years. And then I went to UNCW the last year and a half and uh, graduated down there. And then um, went to, moved straight out to Nashville, Tennessee and got right into the music business. And, um, and then I ended up for 10 years in Nashville producing major concerts, music festivals and corporate events. And so I've worked with every musician on the planet. I mean, everyone from, you know, the Rolling Stones to uh, Jay-Z to Kenny Chesney to, I mean, Fleetwood Mac, one of my favorite bands. <laughs> um, you know, you name it, I've, I've, I've helped produce all of them. And so, um, but, you know, I kind of was, you know, the whole time in Nashville, I had one of the best jobs in the world. Everyone was just like, you have a, you know, what a dream job you have and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, you know, absolutely. It, it really was. Um, but it, Nashville is landlocked and I'm, a, I'm an ocean girl. And so I just kept going, you know, is it, is it more important to live where you want to live and find work and figure it out or, you know, stay where you are climbing this corporate ladder going, okay, well, when I'm seven, 60, 70, whatever, and it's time to retire, um, you know, then I'll go down to the Caribbean or then I'll move out to Colorado to the mountains or where, wherever your, you know, um, dream life is. And in 2010, you know, I kind of jokingly say I had a midlife crisis. I was, I was <laughs> years old at the time. <laughs> and I, uh, I just sold everything and downsized into a couple suitcases and grabbed my yellow lab at the time. His, his name is, uh, is Dakota. He's since passed. But um, and then the two of us just moved down to St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And and I started this business and it, it didn't always start as a travel business. It started as a grocery delivery company, which then morphed into a travel business. And so it, it had a couple different names along the way. So, you know, as an entrepreneur, you know, your business can like pivot quite a few different ways, different names. And um, so it was just something to where I would go, go a little bit in one direction and be like, oh, I really like that, but I don't like that. You know, pivot a little bit, go in a different direction. And, you know, I've been coming to the, the Caribbean, to the Virgin Islands in particular for like over 25 years. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, and there's a direct flight into St. Thomas. So we would do that trip quite a bit. And um, the year in 2009, the year before I moved, I had been down three times that year. And I just, my head just started spinning like, okay, how do I make this work? How can I figure this out? How can I get down here? And then um, finally, I just, I pulled the trigger. I actually, um, Kenny Chesney has a house on St. John. Um, and so I reached out to uh, his management team because, you know, I produced probably six or eight shows with him over the years and said, hey, do you think he could help me get set up down there? And um, or does he have a contact that I could call and see about a place to live or a place to work or whatever? And he sent me the first contact that he sent me was like golden. It started everything for me. So I'm so grateful for that. Um, and uh, and then from there, I just got that job, moved down, lived in this $10 million estate uh, right on the water, and um, not only took care of the guests that were renting the um, the villa, but I was able to start my own business out of this, you know, little carriage house of 550 square feet, <laughs> where I lived for five years and was the property manager of this estate and also building my own business. So 
that's really in a nutshell, just how it happened. And like I said, one thing would lead to another and more growth and more growth. And then, you know, now the U.S. Virgin Islands has turned into the entire Caribbean and the Bahamas. And now it's a global business. It's Fiji and Hawaii and the med. And it's I'm just growing. And it's basically the, the best of the best um, of travel and, e and events is what Blue Sky is. Yeah. So, and it, you know, it's so cool to hear how that just sprouted out. But it all started with a little seed of just thinking about your lifestyle first yes. and, then, and then going from there. So I'm curious when you, cause you seemingly had it all to most people, you had the dream job and did you get, did you get resistance from people or just, did you oh, get any well, like weird looks almost, at first? Yeah. Almost everybody, almost everybody was like, you're crazy. I can't believe you're, le you're leaving this, you know, this dream job. And I'll show you something. Hold on one moment. You got to right. see that. Okay, so these are all of my laminates from the music business. Oh, wow. That's a lot. <laughs> all these shows I worked, I produced. And, you know, I mean, it's everyone. You'll see Snoop Dogg and you'll see the Almond Brothers. See, there's Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yeah. And Almond Brothers. And, I mean, like, you name it, it is in here. And uh, so, so I had... Um, you know, I had so many people just kind of going, oh my gosh, like that's your life. You, you plan these major concerts, you, you run backstage, you're working with the best musicians in the world. How in the world could you leave that? And, you know, again, it, to me, it just came down to quality of life. I didn't see this vision of owning a luxury, a global luxury travel business at the time, but I did see that um, I loved the Caribbean. Every time I would leave, I would pretty much almost be in tears. I don't want to go back to the States, you know? And um, so it was just, I just listened to my intuition. My parents were extremely supportive of me, but honestly, that was, mm, that was kind of about it. Everybody else told me I was nuts, but you know, I joke around and say, now it's a damn good thing. I don't listen to a lot of people. <laughs> so. It's a very good point. It's a very good point. They'll, they'll yeah. come back. They'll come back around later, right? That's what I keep hearing. But now, like, you know, the majority of people are asking me if I'm hiring. So it's kind of funny how it's come full circle. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, that's motivating to hear for, for anyone listening who's, um, who's has, who's maybe in earlier stages and not everyone is on board yet or sees the vision of where you're, where you want to take things. Yes, exactly. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, I just have to say, you know, you only live once and it was a, a very, very scary leap. There's no doubt about it. But, um, you know, do it while you're healthy. And, um, you know, I just I, I feel if, if you want it bad enough, make it work. And I wanted to be young and healthy and enjoy all of this, you know, living in this incredible destination. I didn't want to wait till I was 60 and then go down there once I had saved all of my money. I wanted to do it now. Yeah. And so, the, and also there's no guarantees with that. And so I'm curious, um, you know, you're working with affluent clients, expecting the best. And during your earlier days, especially like customer number one or customer number two, how is it working with them? Or actually, before we even go there, how did you get that first client inside this business? Ooh, the first client. Well, it really started because when I was at the Peter Bay Beach House, um, which I'm actually moving back to next week, which is so funny if we've now come full circle. Um, but I was the live-in property manager of this, this $10 million estate that was right on the water. It's a three bedroom and it, it rented for 25,000 for the week plus tax. And so it really was just, you know, I was there and taking care of the clients. And so it really, those were, you know, really my, my first, my first clients. And that was in 2010. And I still have a lot of them to this day. That's one thing I'll have to say is um, we have a ton of repeats and referrals. I mean, a ton. That's the, how the, you know, the business grows. And of course, that's my favorite because, you know, you, you know what kind of clientele you're getting. And um because we're putting them in some of the most beautiful places around the world and our reputation is extremely important. So we want the right people, type of people going into these properties and, um, and also that we want to work with. So it was, um, yeah, I would say that's, that was really the start of it. And then just, uh, just growing it from there. And when I started, you know, I don't even know that I was, 
doing any social media whatsoever. I didn't really pick up social media until 2014. So to be able to have grown it organically just on my own, and I'm not a social media whiz, but I've just figured out with what works for my business. And it's upwards of about 80,000 followers and growing by like 200 new followers a day. So I really think that we figured out a, a, you know, a nice formula that works. <laughs> yeah. Do you think for like your type of businesses, business or concierge businesses in general, that, you know, at the very beginning, word of mouth and, and face-to-face is how you're going to initially get that momentum. And then social media comes in. Yes. Well, I think had I known more about social media, um, I think if you have it right off the bat and you, you know, I had all these tens, you know, 20,000 pictures of all these beautiful destinations in my phone. So it like, it like took me a minute to be like, oh, wait, you know, I don't have a huge marketing budget right now. Social media is free. Okay, why don't I just start to figure this out? So it just, it, it definitely took a minute. But I think now, looking back, I would probably say, um, you know, let's do both. Let's let's have it so you're showing credibility. You're in front of your potential clients or clients, you know, at least five days a week with some beautiful post of something or um, important, you know, travel tips that you can give someone. So I would do, I would definitely, you know, kind of hammer it at both, uh, you know, referrals and um, or and then trying to get new new business through social media. Mm-hmm. And you know, your your business looks on the outside. It looks just like it's awesome to do like one big fun adventure but I know that's not the case so what are let's say one to two of the toughest aspects that people might be surprised by the toughest aspects well um I would say that well like I was saying before one of the biggest things when a travel agent is trying to grow and expand the business is we're in low season when we're traveling I can't tell you how many hurricanes I've dodged mm-hmm. uh, because I'm you know I for the last 11 years we you know there's been a huge focus on the Caribbean um, and the Bahamas and so um, and especially the Virgin Islands are like right in the bowling alley of where those storms come through so um, so that's definitely a challenge for sure and so much much of a challenge that, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, I feel like you have so many ups and so many downs. And what makes you very different is that whether you, you know, get knocked down and get back up again, no matter kind of how bad it is and figure out a way around. And in 2017, Hurricane Irma and Maria absolutely destroyed my company, like literally to zero dollars. Um, you know, it, the, the U S and British Virgin islands has always been my sweet spot. Probably always will be, um, just cause 25 years of coming here, knowing them better than any other destination on the planet. Um, so the majority of my business is there and it was, it was so devastating to me. I, I mean, so what I ended up having to do is, um, I took out my entire 401k taxed at 20%. And I said, okay, I'm going to take this money and, uh, grow the business back. And hopefully, uh, I will, you know, it'll take off and then some, <laughs> mm-hmm. or I'm going to have to look for a boss, which I haven't had since the music business in 2010. And, uh, I, I really didn't want to go down that route, but I was willing to risk it, uh, every penny that I had to rebuild this business because I just believe in it so much. And I believe in myself so much. <laughs> and I swear it got down to like the last cent. I was just going like, Oh God, you know, what am I going to do? And, it absolutely started to take off. So I had taken with a lot of that money and I have traveled to every single destination, particularly in the Caribbean, that was still standing, that was untouched by the storm and that would be luxury for my type of like super high-end clientele. I mean, I went everywhere. I went to Antigua, Turks and Caicos, Belize, St. Lucia, um, Grand Cayman, uh, like you name it. I was literally on like a flight constantly, just expanding the business as fast as I could. So if it started to take off that way. Then my clients were seeing all this on social media and marketing and or blogs and all sorts of things that I was doing. And, and they were like, oh, okay, so the Virgin Islands needs, you know, probably a couple years to come back. Well, where, where do you suggest we go in the meantime? So I was like, oh, thank God, you know, so, um, but then more importantly is the U.S. Virgin Islands, you know, is since it's a U.S. territory, was awarded like $6 billion to rebuild from the storms, the hurricanes. And so all of these like 
thousands and thousands of construction workers and supervisors and CEOs of these massive construction companies like AECOM. And, um, you know, I mean, there's, I, I worked with 11 of them actually, but I ended up housing over a thousand of the construction workers and the owners of these companies for over a year. Um, about 500 were on St. Thomas and about 500 were on St. Croix. And so I was able to um, make great money doing that, but then also it was a way that I could, you know, help the territory come back. And, um, and I really loved that. And then I was able to use the money that I made from that business because I started another business. It's called Blue Sky Global Logistics. And that money made in that business, I was able to pour into the travel business to build that. So it was, um, it was something that was an absolute blessing in disguise. And I, now that I've been through that as traumatic as it was when it happens again, because I hate to say it, but it will, um, I feel extremely prepared, not only to be able to, you know, help in ways, um, but know that it's going to be all right. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and I think a lot of people can relate to that right now. Um, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty around right now. Some people have probably been forced to pivot their businesses, forced to pivot their day-to-day -day life. So how did you mentally, I'm not going to say keep yourself sane, because I'm sure you probably had a lot of thoughts at that time, but how yeah. did you at least keep yourself enough mentally composed to execute? Well, I think it was just when I get involved in something, I'm all in. And so I was in Charleston, South Carolina, I made a decision to immediately break my lease, um, put all of my stuff in storage and moved right back down to the US Virgin Islands to manage this project. And it was just kind of like, I mean, I was just all in, you know, I was there on the ground, I was creating partnerships with real estate companies down there to house all of these people. Um, it was just a really, really amazing opportunity, you know, for really for everyone, we gave, you know, the FEMA workers and Coast Guard and construction workers, wonderful places to stay. Um, the, you know, the hotels were destroyed for the most part. So that's where everyone was like, you know, they were going, well, where do we stay? We don't have any hotels. And everybody was like, we'll call Shanna at Blue Sky because she has like every, she knows of every villa bed in the Virgin Islands. So <laughs> it was, um, you know, we had everything from a bed level that was, you know, on the less expensive rate um, for like one of their construction workers, everything up to some of the most beautiful villas that we have uh, for the CEOs of the company. Um, so it was just kind of, it, it was a quick decision and it was just all in and boy, am I glad that I decided to do that. <laughs> yeah. And so for someone that's looking to build a business like yours, maybe not exactly in, in the travel industry, but dealing with affluent clientele, a lot, high touch service concierge, um, what are some of the initial tips that you would give them to get their feet off the ground? Um... I would say, gosh, initial tips. I'm trying to think back to 11 years ago when I was when I was starting out with that. I would say it's it's one of the biggest things is just you, you know, when you're selling anything, you want to be known as the best, right? You mm -hmm. want the you want to be the most knowledgeable in your craft. You want to make it so that like your you know your clients couldn't imagine trying to navigate the you know the best properties in the Caribbean or the world without you, um, because you're very honest and you're very transparent and you're extremely knowledgeable. And so I think how you can get there even faster than what I did, and like I was saying before, put it out there on social media. Start to show people that you are doing this. You are living and breathing this. You are doing this. You can how you can help them, how you can help them save money, how you can help them save time, um, and really just have the best best memories in in the world. Um, you know, so I, I think it would just be to to really come out there and show that you know, especially in the beginning, that that you're trying, you're you know, you're you're building the business and you're trying to be the absolute best. So I, I wish I had done that sooner, but you know, it, it is what it is. <laughs> and, and I would also say, um, you know, it'd be great to have a mentor. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't know who to talk to. There. Um... Oh, are you there? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, no, um... you're good. And um, so. You know, I had a ton of questions along the way, but I didn't have anyone to talk to that was that I knew of that was doing exactly what I'm doing. And so I think that I would have saved myself a whole lot of headache if I actually had a mentor guide me along the way. So I think that's pretty important. Yes, definitely. Definitely. So um, I wish I asked for help a long time ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hard though, because 
you know, being a, a, an agent at the high, high, high end, you know, dealing with the ultra luxury and the VVIP and all of that, there are not that many of us that are doing this. So it's, you know, it's, it, it's just not easy to, and not only that, it's extreme, you know, it is much in a lot of things, it's competitive. So who's going to really be like, oh, here's my entire playbook, you know, I'll, I'll totally help you. I mean, you, you got to find the right person that's willing to do that. Yeah, that was, that was going to be one of my next questions. I was, cause I was thinking there's not many businesses like yours that are going for that, that ultra affluent clientele. So right. it's probably hard to find just a bunch of mentors. And I'm thinking a lot of those businesses are word of mouth and yeah. you, you get, you really got to, I don't want to, I guess, get in a circle or know the right people to really get that business going off the ground. Yes, exactly. No, that's, that's a hundred percent. And I operate under the, it just in life, you know, help everybody out, help, it, mm -hmm. you know, if, if there's a, I think there's plenty of money to go around, plenty of business to go around, plenty of everything to go around. So I don't have the outlook that, oh, I'm not going to speak to this person because I don't want them to know how I built this business. Mm -hmm. I'm actually looking to find ways. I just started a nonprofit called Blue Sky Relief Foundation, and I'm actually looking for ways to you know, blanket my story and how I created this business um, to like to, to young, young people like ages like 15 years old to like 25 um, that want to learn how or, or at least get like the the vibe, you know, pick up on the vibe, pick up on the energy, pick up on the mindset of how to do this. Because I would say almost every single day I have about that age group that is reaching out, wanting to know how I did this and mm -hmm. also wanting to do the same thing because they love being able to travel and travel for free and, um, you know, work from anywhere, which is great. As long as I have cell service, I can run my company from anywhere in the world. And so I'm happy to share that, but I can't get on the phone with how busy I am. I can't get on the phone for an hour every single day I, I can't I can't appease everybody so I'm trying to think of some ways to be able to help younger kids who want to be entrepreneurs and like blanket that message so that will be coming in the future I'm just working some things out yeah and I, I think that's a that's a great start to, to yeah. doing that because there's not a lot of people with in this type of industry um, you know typical we see a lot of the world's becoming more and more online, but we see just talking about online businesses, not necessarily something like this. Because to me, when I look at your business, I, I see it as it's a blend of the old and the new. It's mm -hmm. old as just one-to-one, -one, requires a lot of face-to-face, -face, a lot of high-touch customer service. But then the new is that you're leveraging the digital aspects as well now. Oh, yes. Oh, the digital aspect has been so big. And I, I would say one of the biggest things. Um, so when COVID happened, there are a lot of companies, um, especially in, in the travel world, that were cutting marketing. And, you know, we're not making any money. What's the first thing you cut? Well, a lot of it is marketing. Mm -hmm. And um, what I did is I went the opposite. I doubled the marketing budget. I went crazy with marketing. And then I also went out on a limb and I started doing Facebook Lives. I had never done a live before. Uh, I'd done plenty of videos and Insta stories and things like that, but I've never done a live before. And it's a whole different ball game of anxiety. <laughs> and uh, yeah. you know, now I don't think anything of it. I hit the play button or the, you know, the live button and it's like game on and it's no big deal. Um, but I worked with a TV coach um, because I was, I filmed a TV pilot recently while in, in May. And that's another thing we could touch on. But anyway, so I worked with her um, because the whole idea was, is when the, when the green light shows up and you are, you know, in action, you want, she, she said, we want you to be your natural self. There are so many people that the, the play button goes on and they completely like freeze up and they, they give, they give the camera a personality that's not really them. And so the homework assignment that she gave me, her name is Michelle Sorrow and she's got, this is one of her businesses, but the homework assignment was, I want you to do 30 Facebook lives in a row. And I was like, Oh my God. Okay. That means like, that's a commitment. That's makeup every day, which I don't like to wear makeup. And that's, you know, hair being done every day, you know, for, for the most part, you know, you gotta, and so it was a commitment. I finally just told her like, look, I'll do five days a week, but I need to cut Saturdays and Sundays out. I need a break. She's like, okay, that, that's fair enough. Um, and then by like the, the first one, I was extremely nervous by the, by seven, by seven lives in, I was starting to feel much better. Uh, two weeks in totally good. 
um, you know, and then 30 days, it was just like, oh, no problem. And one of the things that was really great about that was it, you know, so many people were, were seeing my beautiful photos and stuff like that. Some of me, a lot of them of the, you know, the property itself, but they didn't really get to know me. Like who, who am I and what am I about? And cause you're, you know, you're working with me as the owner of the company for a lot of this stuff. And so when I came in front of the camera and shared, you know, I was like, God, what am I going to talk about for 30 lives? And I started thinking, and, and Michelle was like, well, it doesn't all have to be business. Let them get to know you as a person. So I talked to, I pulled some of my favorite wines out of my wine fridge. I talked about my favorite wines. I talked about, I love to read. So I talked about my favorite books. I talked about stories of my music days in the music business and how crazy they were. And, you know, talk, told some of them. Um, it was, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of uh, animal rescue. Um, a huge part of my charity will be animal rescue. And um, so I was telling some stories of some animals I rescued off the streets in Puerto Rico and some other places. And they were crazy stories. Like I had to get private jets and you know, they were, I didn't pay for them. Friends, you know, were leaving. So I was like securing like the craziest things last minute to save these animals. And so they really got to know me and I'm telling you, oh my gosh, business went like through the roof. I mean, it was crazy. Within the first seven days of these lives, it brought in an additional 650,000 in new business. I mean, it was just, it was crazy good. So the, uh, so the online presence of particularly the lives were huge for my company. Interesting. Yeah, I've I've been adverse to doing lives myself <laughs> and, and, and social media, but I, I, but you, but you know, like, because I I just started, you know, the podcast the podcast thing. I was nervous to do the podcast. I'm much more comfortable just writing. That's that's what I normally used to do. But you know, now I'm doing this, and now I'll put it on YouTube and stuff. But um, that's interesting. It's getting out of your comfort zone. Yes, it is. It is. But let me tell you, whew, it is worth it. It is mm -hmm. so worth it. And if someone wants to speak with the, the coach that I worked with, i um, more than happy to share who that is. Um, but I, I would highly recommend getting, you know, getting involved in that. And what you can do is when you do the Facebook live, mm -hmm. before you hit the share button, um, you hit the save button and it goes directly to your camera roll. And then from there, you can upload the exact same video to um, Instagram, to the IGTV and also to LinkedIn. And so I was able to do one video, but share it to all these other platforms, making it very easy. And so that, that was a great formula in one, because Otherwise, if you ask me to spend more time than I already am on social media, I'm going to be like, oh gosh, you know, it, that's just too much. But this little trick is, um, is a really great way to kind of blanket it, but not spend that much more time on it. Well, that's interesting. Never knew you could do that. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. uh, I'm happy to steal that. Yeah. Because uh, yes. that's, that's one reason why I, uh, I, I really only pay attention to like one social platform is because I just don't want to spend all that time on the other ones. And what do you pay attention to? I like LinkedIn. Yes, I know. LinkedIn is so big. When people tell me that they own a business <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm like, oh my God, you have to be. <laughs> I, I, I liked LinkedIn. It's just, it seems like there's less extra noise over there. I yes. Think. Great. Yeah. yeah. Although LinkedIn is quite changing. There is, there is definitely starting to be some noise on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Very much less, yeah. um, but it's absolutely changing. When you're seeing people post videos of cute little puppies and animal rescue which look i'm all about but that yeah. was not on in you know <laughs> <even> a year ago <laughs> yeah yeah so um yeah you know I, I even seen workout videos over there i was like oh man really oh i know yeah i know it's I definitely think. changing but it's a fantastic platform i would say for me dealing with the high-end clientele that i am uh, the biggest two for me would be um, Facebook and LinkedIn, because I think the an older demographic is on both. And so you're, you know, typically, I would say probably more people with, um, you know, uh, income like that to be able to travel um, mm -hmm. there, you know, some of them, yes, they're on uh, Instagram, but the ones I feel like that are really spending the money are on, the, you know, Facebook and, and, um, and LinkedIn. Um, Instagram, I have the most followers in one platform. I think it's like 33,000. So um, I think it's more, that's kind of skews younger in my opinion. So it's more people that want to like live vicariously through your travels and, you know, and stuff like that, which is great. Um, but I, I think the business business of what goes from there directly to the website to lead to, you know, for leads are, are mm -hmm. Facebook. And them. That makes sense. That, that makes sense. I never thought about that for Facebook. So I might have to look mm -hmm. back into Facebook. So take my biases yeah. out of it. 
it's free you know why not yeah yeah so you mentioned a tv pilot um what, what was that about yeah so um you know just because there's been so much interest in um in my life from growing this business and you know all of the incredible travels that i get to do all of the time there for the last probably two years there have been mm, i think there were maybe six producers tv producers that came my way and said oh my gosh, your Instagram is like the best account we've ever seen. Is, is there any way you'd be interested in um, doing a TV show about your life and, and your company? And I said, I said, yeah, you know, I'd be interested, but um, you know, I'm, I'm not a drama person. I don't like drama. <laughs> don't like, you know, so it needs to be uplifting and inspiring and real and um, all of this stuff. So, so a lot of them, I just vetoed when they started going that drama route, like well, who are your most difficult clients and what are their requests that are, you know, and I'm just like, no, 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 no. Yeah. We're not talking about my clients. We're not talking about negatively about my clients. We're not, that information is completely off limits. So when there was a production company called Atomic Focus, and uh, they are based here in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, where I am. And um, when, when we met and started talking about it, I said, look, I, you know, my life is, is, you know, travel, it's luxury accommodations, it is, you know, um, services and activities that are incredible, the must sees and do's and places to eat in these destinations. And then I'm huge in charity work, um, you know, in a big chunk of it being animals, helping shelter animals. And so they were like, we love it. So within like, they came over to the house right away. We sat for three hours on my porch and they were just like, tell us everything, your story, your business, how you see this show going down. And they said, oh my God, we love it. We love it. So within like 48 hours, they had the most beautiful pitch deck put together. And then I said, okay, like now let's, let's do it. So we went and filmed a pilot in um, Santa Rosa beach, which is also called 30 a, which is in the Gulf of Mexico um, in Florida. And that was the fourth destination because COVID ixnade the first three. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we ended up there, which was still beautiful and amazing. Um, and so, yeah, so then we took that pilot and, um, and then I got an agent and manager. So did they, and we have just been shopping it and we have so much interest. We're getting really, really close to a major network deal. And so then we're going to take all of this, like, you know, really, really out on, the road, so to speak. And this is also my reasoning as to why I created Blue Sky Relief Foundation, because when we get a network deal, I want the network to funnel, you know, the popularity mm -hmm. of the show hopefully funnels a ton of money over to the nonprofit. And we can make a really big difference with, you know, helping people and animals and the environment and all sorts of things that I'm very passionate about. That's awesome. I can't, I can't wait to see that. That's, awesome. that's going to be really great. Um, you, you know, as we wrap this up here, let's, let's dive into, I know you're, I know you're um, into fitness. Let's talk about how do you stay so healthy and sharp? And I know you travel a lot. So yes. that's, a, that's a lot of extra obstacles. So what's your, it what's is. your secret? <laughs> my secret is I always travel with my tennis racket. I was mm -hmm. a division one college tennis player. And um, so it's also a great way to meet people. You know, whenever I go to a destination, I always bring my racket. I always go to the tennis courts, find the tennis pro, you know, get a, hit, get a hit, hitting session in. And then, you know, through the locals, you can, you can figure out so much just from, you know, being on the court and meet, meeting the people there. So if there's a tennis court, which usually there are in destinations I travel to, I'm on the courts. So um, that is, that's a big part as to how I stay in shape. But if that isn't the case, then um, I do, I created like a little workout that you can just do like in your hotel room. I mean, if you really have like absolutely nothing and it would be like, uh, 20 jump squats into um, like a wall sit for like 30 seconds into 20 push-ups into 20 abs into 20 supermen, you know, where you hold and you're, mm -hmm. you know, you do the back exercise. And then after that, hop up right away, do the same thing. And you do that like 10 rounds to where you're 25, 30 minutes and you are just dripping in sweat. And it is an amazing little workout to do when all you have is like a you know, 500 square foot hotel room and your own body weight. And that's it. So I'll, I'll definitely um, resort to that at times, but you know, I'm, I'm always looking for a gym or tennis courts, you know, things like that. And I'm still very, I still train very hard six days a week. Um, I do a lot of Ashtanga power yoga, you know, advanced power yoga. Um, so the gymnastics, uh, the gymnast in me mm -hmm. never 
left. And so um, I've channeled that from gymnastics to yoga and it's great. It keeps me very flexible, very healthy. Um, so, and then I'm just constantly trying to always eat organic fruits and vegetables. I mean, I'm, I am a huge vegetable person and I think all of the, you know, the kale and the spinach and the broccoli and all of the, you know, amazing green leafy vegetables that I put in my body, I think has just been extremely helpful. And one of the other things I'll mention is um, I take juice plus, which is um, in capsules and it's organic. And I travel to so many, well, I travel so much that it can be difficult getting your fruits and vegetables in for every day. And I've been on this stuff for years. And um, so I always have my juice plus and and, you know, if I get not even one vegetable in for the day, um, then at least I have the bare minimum that my body requires. And so that is very important to my travels to make sure that goes with me. Yeah, I, I like, I like vegetables now, you know, I, I, I had to, um, that's, that was one of the last pieces. I, and I know it's crazy to hear that. They're like, aren't you in the health industry? You're supposed to love vegetables. But I was like, yeah, that's one of the last things that, that, that I really started to just love. But now yeah. Now I crave it, and um, now now I crave them, and and so it's a it's a staple, and I do feel yeah. better with my performance and everything. I agree. You know, it's like with with these with those leafy vegetables and broccoli and and um, blueberries and I mean walnuts and olive oil. I mean, all of those things are anti-inflammatory. So you know, basically, my diet is just full of anti-inflammatory. I eat a ton of fish, salmon. You know, I'm in the islands all the time, so it's fresh seafood. Um, so I just really try to pay attention and eat as healthy as possible. Um, you know, not drink a whole lot. Of course I don't smoke. So, you know, just as an athlete, I've just been trained my whole life to, um, you know, eat well, take care of your body. Um, you know, I, I work out, like I said, every day, there's, there's a lot of times where I have to be like, Shanna, okay, <laughs> you've worked out six days a week. I take a day off, let your body rest. You know, I'm just like, so in a routine of, working my body out because I feel so good and I, and I love it. I love the way it makes me feel, you know, it's your natural high, mm -hmm. your endorphins get going, your serotonin and your dopamine. You're like, woo. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I mean, I, I, I've started to, since the COVID, since COVID and everything, I've started to include running as well into my yeah. regimen. And Definitely. so, uh, and so now I, you know, I did 10 miles the other day. It, it was Whoa, great. that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> very good. That's very good. Well, I'll tell you one of the things um, when you sent me who'd been on your show in the past, uh -huh. it was Tony, Tony Horton, right? Yeah. Yeah. And oh my God, that like, totally caught my attention because I, in moving down to St. John in 2010, um, you know, there's, there's a gym there now, but at the time, I don't know that there was even one or it was, you know, worth it to go. And so I got um, the P I got P90X and T25. And that mm -hmm. is what I did for like over a year. And I didn't couldn't do one pull up unassisted. I couldn't even do one when I started it. And by the end of it, I could do 15 pull ups in a row unassisted thanks to Tony Horton. So that those those um, programs or whatever that make it so easy to do it out of your house, I strongly recommend that. And then now the workouts that I do, like I was just telling you that 25 minute one, mm -hmm. it's a combination of T25 stuff and, um, and P90X stuff. So very thankful for that brand, the Beachbody and what they have, um, you know, allowed me to, how they have allowed me to stay in shape while I'm traveling and like have no weights or anything like that. Yeah, and, and you know, he's a ball of energy. Yes, right? he is. <laughs> I, I had to, I took, I took extra caffeine that day when I knew I was going to talk to him because I knew he was, <laughs> have a energy. I was like, because I'm more of a laid back person and he, he comes on there and he's just like riled up. I was like, yes. let me go get another espresso here. Yeah, I know. Right. I need to be on your level. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, um, let's do a few questions to end this out. What does success okay. mean to you? What does success mean to me? Um, to me, success is owning your own time. Mm -hmm. So if you were to tell me that I could make $10 million a year at, um, at an office job with two weeks of vacation, or I can make $100,000 a year working you know, my own schedule and traveling the world and working from my phone, I would so easily take the 100 grand and own my own time. Mm -hmm. That's what success means to me. And uh, you mentioned books earlier. What are two to three books that you just love? My top book, all-time favorite, I was in tears at the end, and I'm not going to say why, I certainly don't want to spoil it, um, but it is called um, Shoe Dog, and it's by Phil Knight, 
who is the creator of Nike. Mm -hmm. And it's such, it was such a great story that it's actually being turned into a movie that's going to be made by Netflix is my understanding. And I think they're working on it now. Mm -hmm. um, so I cannot wait to see it. So that would, that's up there. That's my number one. And then my number two is Andre Agassi's autobiography. Oh, oh okay. It was incredible. So, you know, clearly as an athlete, I've mm -hmm. geared towards, but I love, I love the, um, the Steve, the story, you know, Steve Jobs of Apple. I loved that book. So I, I, I always gear towards um, entrepreneurs or athletes because I want to read their story. Mm -hmm. So I, I just finished um, a book on Elon Musk. I am finishing right now the one on about Jeff Bezos and the, the everything store. So reading mm -hmm. about, um, Amazon and how it was created. So I'm, I'm constantly trying to learn from these, you know, insane entrepreneurs. And I got to ask you a music question. Um, what are, what's your musical starting five? So this can be groups, it can be artists. Who are your five favorites? My five favorites. Uh, number one would be Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> You're the second uh, person today to set that. No way, really? Yeah. Oh yeah, I love Fleetwood Mac. I would say another would be, um, gosh, well, back in my like, you know, deep, deep down, I'm a hippie. So, um, you know, I went to uh, over 130 widespread panic shows, which were mm -hmm. very much like the Grateful Dead, if you know anything about widespread panic. Um, so, you know, like I do, I do love that type of music. Uh, what else? Gosh, I, you know, I love Coldplay. I love, I don't, I'm not, I'm terrible about what's new right now. I'm, Me too. I'm not, Me too. honestly, when I, I love Pandora and I love, I love, I love Pandora the most. And I just put on chill radio um, mm -hmm. or yes, chill radio. And I, I just listen to music literally from morning to night. Um, and while I'm working, listening to that type of uh, music it it allows me to work and get in a groove and pandora actually sent me you get like a notification and it said something like wow you've listened to seventy three thousand songs in one year like way to oh, go yeah. You're mm -hmm. top 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 <laughs> spot um, spotify does that as as they do that they do something like that as well because i got i was in the top one percent listeners of marvin gaye I was like, oh. I was like, interesting. This is interesting. Yes, yes. So <laughs> I, I'm much more of that now. And, mm -hmm. um, but, and honestly, you know, you know, God, we've been just, we haven't been to concerts, it feels like in forever. So to know what in the world is going on in that scene right now and be up to date, I'm just not at the moment. Yeah. And so the last question here is someone comes up and taps you on the shoulder and they say, what are three things that I can do today to start becoming a superhuman entrepreneur? What would you tell them? Um, what can I do today to be a superhuman entrepreneur? Yeah, to start um, the to start the process, start the journey of it. To start the journey, um, well, definitely get into the mindset that you are going to fail quite a few times, and um, and with the notion that no matter what, you get back up and you figure out a different direction and you keep going. So I would say go into it with the right mindset because, you know, I have failed so many times, but I just kept getting back up. So that's big. I also think like we talked about before, find a mentor who can help you, help guide you. That is so important. So I think that's like right off the bat, that's, that's really big. Um, and, you know, when, when you're going into something, um, into a business that you want to create or whatever, do as much research as absolutely humanly possible. Talk to as many people as you can, you know, just as learn, learn as much as you can. You're going to learn a lot as you go with mm -hmm. all the mistakes you're, you're going to make. Um, but I would just say, you know, I, I think those three things are, um, you know, and be willing to do things like Facebook lives, <laughs> <laughs> be willing to be out there and to connect with your clients and mm -hmm. your future clients, because, now more than ever, we are, so many companies now are being like, oh, we can get rid of overhead. Oh, everyone can work from their home. You know, uh, meetings are virtual. And so, you know, so many of us that you, you can capture my attention, you know, very easily through social media because so many people are at home on their phones. So be willing to, you know, go out of your comfort zone to, uh, to grow your business. I think that's important. That's a great way to book this conversation, Shana. Um, 
thank you so much for joining me. Um, where can listeners keep up with you? Yeah, so um, I would say one of the most exciting pages is definitely my Instagram. So it's um, it's at Dickerson underscore Shanna, S-H-A-N-N-A. So you can find me there, which is fun. And then the business, the website for my company is Blue Sky Luxury Travels with an S dot com. So um, all of our properties are listed there. We have over 100 villas and private islands around the world. We have thousands of yacht charters, everything from mega yachts to sailing catamarans. Um, and then I just actually yesterday closed a deal to be able to offer my clients uh, private jets. So that is a really, really exciting partnership. And um, so that's going to be on the site very soon. Um, so yeah, the, the site is fun. It's I think it's just fun even to just browse through, look at the luxury villas, see where they are, read about them. Um, so there's really great brochures on the website. So it's, it's a fun site to go to. And then I also have a YouTube channel, um, which is called Blue Sky Luxury Travels. So you could go there and we typically uh, put out a video a week and it'll be everything from you know, places Americans can go right now to travel to new CDC travel recommendations that just came out. That video is posting today. Um, top places for a destination wedding, top places for honeymoons, top places for large groups that are traveling. So it's all sorts of great, you know, helpful information on the YouTube uh, channel as well. And I will have all this in the show notes and I can comment. It's a, the Instagram page and the, uh, the website and the YouTube will all give you travel ideas and, and have you just yearning to, to get out there and explore the world. So thank you again. Yeah. And um, listeners, stay awesome, be limitless, and go be superhuman. Peace.